Hey everybody, it is AJ here, and in today's video, we're gonna see if the 2017 iMac is any good in 2022. With Apple continuing their move towards Apple Silicon, I think now is one of the best times ever to go pick yourself up an Intel-based iMac on the second-hand market. What we have here in front of us is a 2017 27-inch 5K iMac with an i5 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, a 4 gig graphics card, and a 1 terabyte Fusion hard drive. Of course, it is running the latest operating system, Mac OS Monterey. The first thing you see on the 2017 27-inch iMac is the gorgeous 5K display that even by 2022 standards, this screen is probably better than the majority of the displays out there. Of course, it has the HD camera up the top, it has great speakers at the back of it, and it's got a number of ports at the base. So we have four USB 3 ports, two Thunderbolt 3 ports, an Ethernet port, and of course, an SD card slot. I also love the fact that there is only one cable running and charging the entire machine here. With no external power bricks or docking stations, it becomes a really neat setup on the desk. Even though this machine here is five years old, Apple continues to sell this design even in 2022 because the screen and the design is just so good. Although they will probably update it at some point later this year with an Apple Silicon iMac that may have a bigger or different display. Now, I got this Mac extremely cheaply in my opinion. I paid 550 Aussie dollars, which is less than 400 USD. Granted, that didn't come with a keyboard or a mouse, but it comes with everything you see in front of you. But you have to ask yourself, how did I get this thing so cheaply? Well, there's no tricks, there's no magic. Simply a local business said they'd upgraded to new iMacs and they needed to get rid of their old fleet. So I got this thing here, I saw it for 550 bucks and thought that is a great price. Went and picked it up. But you have to realize that if Apple never moved towards Apple Silicon, great deals like this to get an iMac for 550 bucks probably would never have happened. What we've seen in the past 12 or so months is that there is the biggest decline in the prices of Intel-based Macs ever since Apple Silicon came out. So if you're looking at getting an Intel-based Mac, now is probably the best time because you're gonna get the best bargain you're gonna find in the past couple of years. But you also have to ask yourself, with the introduction of Apple Silicon, are the Intel-based Macs worth anything anymore? Or should you go out, spend a bit more money and get an Apple Silicon-based Mac? Well, in this video, we're gonna find out. The first thing I noticed when I booted up the 27 inch iMac here was the gorgeous, beautiful 5K display. Even by 2022 standards, this thing is still better than majority of the monitors out there. And I think that screen alone for me made it such a good purchase. For 550 bucks, getting a 5K display is unreal. The inbuilt speakers on it are great for when you're watching movies and YouTube and videos and Teams calls on here. So the speakers on here, again, were really great for the price. And the HD webcam that's built in is okay, but honestly, most of us are working from home nowadays, so the one upgrade I did make straight away was attach my Microsoft Modern webcam that simply plugged into the USB port at the back, and that gives me a full 1080p picture, which is a lot better than the HD camera that was inbuilt in the iMac. One of the things I did worry about when buying and of course booting up this Mac was that Fusion hard drive, knowing that it only has a small portion, which is SSD, and the majority of it, most of that one terabyte, is of course spinning hard disk. After turning it on, I thought this thing is okay, it's kind of snappy, but within 24 hours of usage, I knew that I needed to get rid of that Fusion drive because it was just so slow, especially when you're used to using SSDs in every computer that I have. I did contemplate actually taking the screen apart, pulling out that Fusion Drive and putting in an SSD, but I thought for the hassle and the possibility of breaking something, it's not worth the risk. But Mac OS actually makes it really easy to boot from external hard drives. So I went and I ordered a one terabyte Samsung T7 SSD. I plugged it in via the Thunderbolt 3 port at the back and now I'm booting Mac OS off the external SSD. But you can't even see it here on this setup and that's because I use a 12th South iMac uh, backpack. It's basically a tray that sits at the back of your iMac and you can put things on the back of it like external hard drives and other things that you wanna hide behind this beautiful display. Because I'm planning on using the iMac here as my main video editing machine, I knew that eight gigs of RAM inside of here just wasn't gonna cut it. I think if you're doing basic tasks, internet browsing, word processing, simply upgrading to the external SSD will be more than enough for you. But if you're wanting to do a bit more graphic intensive programs, um, you are gonna wanna, of course, upgrade the RAM. And with the 2017, 27 inch iMac, it's actually really easy to upgrade the RAM. 
It did come with eight gigs of RAM, but I jumped on Amazon. I ordered myself a 16 gig stick, and within five minutes, I popped off the back chassis and upgraded from eight to 24 gigs of RAM. And the cool thing is because this can go up to 64 gigs, I haven't even maxed it out yet. And it was only $90 for that 16 gig stick of RAM. So one of the benefits of the iMac here is the fact that it is still upgradable. Being able to easily upgrade it from eight to 16 to 24, all the way up to 64 gigs of RAM is quite inexpensive. A 16 gig cost me $90 off Amazon, and I can go all the way from eight, all the way up to 64 gigs of RAM, which is just amazing for this machine. So I typically do my video editing in DaVinci Resolve and I usually edit in either 1080p or 2K. And if I looked at the Geekbench uh, benchmarks of the iMac, it didn't get the best numbers for 2022. And it is of course only running the i5 quad core processor instead of the i7. But I can tell you that video editing on this thing has been an absolute dream. Um, once I've moved it from the internal to the external SSD drive, installing that extra 16 gigs of RAM, it has been so, so good to work on. Um, it is much faster and much quieter and cooler than my older machine. Um, scrubbing and editing has been such a breeze, adding titles and layers and graphics. Really, I am so impressed with how well this machine is holding up in real world usage for my use um, in 2022 that it is actually better than I expected it to be. And of course, if I ever need more headroom, I can again upgrade that RAM. I am of course stuck with the four gig graphics card, but for now it has not been any sort of bottleneck for me. Now, one thing you wanna consider when buying a used Mac is of course how long it's gonna be serviced for by Apple. And I don't just mean the warranty, but I mean how long will it get the latest updates of Mac OS. So this is a 2017 model, which means it's not gonna last as long as a 2022 model, purely as computers get depreciated. But what you will see is that Apple typically lets computers get the latest updates for eight versions afterwards. So this computer is a 2017 model, which means I'm gonna get the latest version of Mac OS all the way up to 2024, maybe even 2025. But the thing is, even after it gets its last and latest version of Mac OS ever, Apple still typically supports them for three more years with security patches. So even if this got its last Mac OS update in 2024, and then it got me three more years of security patches, that would get me all the way up to 2027 um, and making this machine 10 years old. And only then would it really become a bit of an issue or a pain to work with once it's no longer secured by Apple. So when I break down the value of the 2017, 27 inch 5K iMac, Here's sort of how I'd look at it. It cost me 550 bucks to buy, and then I upgraded the hard drive from the one terabyte Fusion drive inside. It cost me $170 to get the Samsung T7 SSD. Then I put in another 16 gigs of RAM for 90 bucks, and of course I bought the 12th South backpack for $60 to hide the tray at the back of it, which means all up this Mac cost me 870 Aussie dollars. And of course, I can still upgrade that RAM from 24 all the way up to 64 if I need more RAM. Let's do a quick comparison of this iMac against the base model 24 inch M1 iMac. So the base model M1 24 inch is gonna cost $18.99 Aussie dollars or about $1,000 more than what I spent on this iMac here. Of course, in raw benchmarking numbers, the M1 definitely outpaces the i5 inside of here. But what I get in the 2017 model here is a bigger, larger, brighter, better resolution display. I also get two terabytes worth of storage. I've got my one terabyte SSD, and then of course the one terabyte inbuilt Fusion Drive, opposed to the 250 gig SSD inside of the M1 Mac. And then when you look at ports on the new 24 inch M1 Mac, you get two Thunderbolt ports. On the 27 inch 2017 iMac here, I've got four USB 3 ports, two Thunderbolt 3 ports, an Ethernet port, and of course, the SD card slot as well. And one added benefit of the Intel-based Macs is that you can also dual boot into Mac OS or even put Windows 10 or Windows 11 on here. Overall, I am extremely happy with my purchase here. I have a machine that does everything I want it to do, especially when it comes to video and graphical editing. It's a beautiful display. It has room for me to upgrade it. I have all the storage that I need. On my desk here, I don't worry about docks and adapters or external cables. I now just have one single cable running into the back of the iMac. So it's a really, really neat setup. I can boot into Windows and of course boot into Mac OS on here. 
And I know that it's gonna get the next couple of years of updates on here. And then after that, I'm gonna get, of course, sec the security updates. So I reckon this thing is gonna be good until about 2027. So my final verdict is if you're looking at saving a couple of bucks, um, but you wanna get yourself a Mac, definitely have a look at the Intel-based Macs that are on the market. They are great deals to be had like this 27 inch iMac in front of me. Um, and of course, if it does everything you need it to do, then you're gonna get yourself a bargain. These are my opinions. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're in a supercharged way, use your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. <laughs>